Yo, what's up? We're now sitting in the Tesla Model 3, uh, my studio. And today I wanna talk about something. You know, uh, car manufacturers, they, they supply with a number, usually uh, charging time to 80%. And then some car manufacturers, they, they don't really tell you how many percent they start charging from. But this is usually the number you see when you read the specs on the car, it will say how much range it has, how many horsepower, and then it says charging time to 80%. But some places you see that it goes from zero to 80%. Some car manufacturers say even 20 to 80% or 30 to 80 percent so there's actually no industry standard here and 80 percent is fair enough but many cars actually they will start throttling before 80 percent so for example a kona ideally for a kona or e-nero you want to charge to about 75 percent or 73 percent past 73 percent it starts going pretty slow so that's why uh, I in mean, my personal opinion, after testing so many cars, I found out that if you are in a rush, if time matters, you should charge to only 65 to 70 percent. But I still consider 75 to be a good uh, compromise between the times when you you are in a rush and you you are not wait you you don't have anything to do, or versus the other times when you are eating and then you actually have to stay there until sometimes 85, 90 percent. Uh, because if you set the if you set the limit too high, let's say you know my videos, I charge to ninety percent, but I always highlight that charging ninety percent takes too long. Some cars like e-tron e will do it very well to ninety percent, but most people they don't charge to ninety percent. Uh, but I still show it, yeah, I still show how fast they go to ninety percent, but. Um, so if you set that, if you say that huh, every every car manufacturer should should, should say charging time to ninety percent, well, it will look pretty bad for most cars, except for e-tron and maybe Taycan and Model Three. But then if you set the bar too low, like charging time to fifty percent, then many people will be like, why fifty percent? We want to charge a little bit more than that, uh, because most cars charge pretty fast to fifty percent. So that's why I figured out that seventy five is a pretty good uh, good tr threshold where most people want to unplug and go to the next one um, and also uh, where do we start charging from because some car manufacturers apply zero percent as a starting point and that is a bit risky because most people they don't discharge to zero percent before they charge it again so I think starting from 10% is way safer. In case something happens, uh, charging station is down or charging station is fully occupied, then you have that extra margin so you can go to another place or something or take a detour in case of a road construction. So um, now let's show you here. So here we have the spreadsheet, the Google Sheet, and this is the range tab. And I've added three more uh, uh, columns here. And you see, I call them 75% range, but technically, if you look at the formula, you will see that we are using only 65%. But that, fair enough, I mean, the 75 is the threshold for unplugging. And you see, what I do is that I take the 65% of the actual range test, and it could be winter like this one, or it could be summer like this one. And we look at the range that you get for each uh, charging stop to 75% only because this actually matters when you start driving on long trips and then we look at this one here i left out the units uh, <laughs> but this is the number of minutes it takes to reach 75 percent and yeah so you see in a way yeah it's a little bit unfair for the i3 because the i3 charges faster and faster towards about 85 to 90 percent then it starts slowing down but at least you know this, it will cover most of the car's optimal charging speed and then this one is also the the as the essential in the video uh, on 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 the other or the about this which is that we also look at the efficiency well, how is the formula again uh okay okay yeah you we look at uh, how much range you gain but also based on the charging uh, time because um we actually don't look at the consumption but the consumption is already a part of this because the, it's derived from the capacity and the consumption yeah then you get the range so uh, what this boils down to is that fast charging cars like e-tron of course it, it, it's very impressive but the car is also thirsty 
So um, I think this information here is more useful to users than the, the big jungle of, uh, of charging times with different start and stop points. Uh, so the, it becomes interesting once we start sorting this if we sort it from set to this one, the highest value here. So you see that Taycan has the highest kilometers per hour if you go to 75%. And yeah, even Taycan has <laughs> insane. Look here. So this is with the, some, yeah, the narrow summer tires. Then you get insanely good numbers uh, and also very good range and also 18 minutes charging time. But you see that the Taycan 4S with a smaller battery also takes 18 minutes but it has a smaller battery so it means lower range and that means also oops that means also slightly slower but you see that up in the top here is just insane how fast these car charges we're talking about a thousand kilometers per hour and by the way what does this this number mean i mean some people will be like giggling <laughs> you talk about ch ch kilometers per hour of charging ha 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 you're breaking the speed limit no this basically means that if you would charge for one hour in theory you would get 1255 kilometers per hour but because we are only charging to 18 uh, in 18 minutes then that's that's the the, the average speed yeah actually uh, when when the Taycan is peaking at 270 kilowatt this number here is way higher it should be 1600 uh, something kilometers per hour don't remember but um, you see now this is actually more useful for people who care about charging speed and traveling time fast traveling time they can look at this and see that okay uh, Taycan and Model 3 they are pretty outstanding but also here the Raven is also pretty good and then well actually it's <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't do this uh, purposely but uh, just happened to be that on the top here it's dominated by uh, Taycan and uh, Tesla and then down here yeah here we have e-tron you see I mentioned that e-tron charges impressively fast it needs only 24 minutes to reach 75 percent but because it is so so thirsty then it only gets a 600 uh, kilometers per hour average for that session uh, and then wow more Teslas more Teslas Sportback more Teslas wow and then e-tron 55 okay ID3 first you see ID3 does it also quite well because it's so efficient and it has fairly good battery size so um, this is actually something that I think car manufacturers should give a, a spec uh, okay maybe not exactly this way but something in the lines of this because then it would be easier for customer customers or future customers to to understand better how fast these cars charge because you see the problem for example with polestar is that polestar they claim that the car charged 150 kilowatt so if you look at the spec on the polestar you're thinking oh it supports 150 kilowatt but um, the the uh, the e-tron also supports 150 kilowatt it means that polestar and e-tron they are neck on ne they are the same when it comes to charging speed right well guess again uh so e-tron had four, 600 right where is polestar polestar is here 500 only why is that well because the charging curve on the polestar is not com completely flat like uh, like the e-tron and also another thing is that the polestar can actually not reach 150 kilowatt you can only get 133 <laughs> i never I, I was never able to achieve 150 but uh, e-tron can achieve 150 and what else um yeah and then of course <laughs> if you're interested you can see down here uh, for example the model x long range raven actually scores quite bad uh yeah this is even even during summer you see that it scores only for oh, man i keep scrolling it scores only 461 and that is because uh, the the Raven doesn't charge nearly as fast as e-tron to 90 percent but of course in the 1000 kilometer challenge then the Raven has an, an initial longer range than, uh, than oh no, I forgot uh, one, another thing yeah I forgot <laughs> you see that I forgot to notice that we are talking about the 120 test here so that this is also useful to see that okay the Raven uh, at 120 kilometers per hour we get 461 okay what, what about the raven uh da, 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 da. maybe i should search for it but um yeah i'm a little bit blind now that i'm recording there, 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 there. whoa 
Oh, oh, you see, yeah, okay. So the Raven, uh, when you drive at 90, you see the speed here, it's actually neck on neck with e-tron. And the, the, the only reason why the Raven can keep up with the e-tron is because the Raven charges slower, but it has it, it is more efficient than the e-tron. And that's why, yeah. And also, yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, this is actually very useful. And yeah, I just realized, I forgot to look at the speed here, there's 120 test. And of course, naturally, slow charging cars, and also especially in, during winter, they will get pretty low results here. Uh, like the like this one, ID3, What? why is the ID3 suddenly low here? Well, it's a 120 test, and it was done in winter in minus eight. That's why it, get, it goes so slow. But this is also very useful information for you. If you're planning on driving at 120 in winter, or if you're planning on driving at, at 90 kilometers per hour, like this one, Kona, uh, in winter, what can you expect then versus summer? So I think this, this, these data that I have, because I'm sitting on all this data and I can just process it and display useful information. E-crafter, holy shit, okay. So I can display this information so it becomes more clear which car you should get ba based on your needs. Uh, but you will see that here in the bottom here, there are some cars without values and the reason for that is that I haven't tested Charging on these cars if I if I find out I, I could do that actually to figure out how long it takes to charge to 75% and then I will get a value here, but I haven't done it yet uh, Yeah, this one and the Mini Cooper. Well, actually the Mini Cooper has the same as wait, huh? Didn't I test this yet? What? Hmm? Hmm? Okay, whatever. Yeah, I think I have it. Okay, I might, by the time you watch this video, I might have updated some of the values here, but you get an idea. So, um, yeah, let me undo that one. I prefer the unsorted, uh, yeah. So, yeah, what do you guys think, huh? Is this useful? Should this be the new industry standard? Uh, is it, is this, is, are these values that I presented, are they going to confuse users even more? Or should these values be replaced <laughs> with the ones that the, the, the zero to 80% or the whatever the I think Xpeng uses the, the 20 uh, Xpeng says charging time from 30 to 80% yeah <laughs> which is again even more confusing so in my opinion personal opinion I think this uh, this is good because as soon as people understand what these numbers mean then it becomes really easy to compare this car with that car yeah, when it comes to charging speed. So, um, yeah, I don't know what you guys think, but at least from now on, every time I do the range test, if I have charging data, I will also supply with the, the charging speed, the 75% data. Yeah, I just call it the 75% data. So, um, I think that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.